found some time to refine my um, UV motion planning. It's a bit more sophisticated than it was last time. Just to recap, I've got a um, strange printer. <laughs> I've got an XY axis that holds the uh, hot end. And then my six extruders and two expansion boards go on another uh, gantry that sits above the, uh, the main one, and that's the UV gantry. And because I'm a bit crazy, I've got a third gantry, which is um, a load balancing gantry, um, which sits above those two, and that's the AB gantry. Initially, once all the axes had been homed, they were mapped to the same XY axis or XY gantry if you like. So as far as um, printing was concerned um, the moves just needed to be G1, XY and E and all three gantries would move. The UV motors are reversed so they do the opposite of the other gantries. Then in my last video um, that I did or rather than combine the UV a, B axis with the X and Y, I left them split. Primarily it was because I wanted to run higher motor currents on the UV gantry because it's a lot heavier and I use bigger motors. So I have to have a G-code file that has a G1, X, Y, U, V, A, B moves. So in my last video I had an attempt at doing that, which worked kind of okay. It, was, uh, it achieved its objective, um, but it's fairly crude. So to recap, there is some flex in the Bowden tubes and wires between the UV gantry with the extruders on and the hot end, which means that the UV gantry doesn't necessarily have to replicate every move that the hot end gantry does. And because that UV gantry weighs about three kilograms, when you start doing short zigzag infill moves, uh, the total moving mass is somewhere about 5 kilograms and the whole machine used to rock around which is why I fitted the low balancing gantry. So what I achieved by separating UV from XY was uh, the amount of flexibility that's in those Bowden tubes and wires means that there is a tolerance of about t plus or minus 20 mil in the X axis and plus or minus 15 mil in the Y axis. So what I did on my first attempt was when I generated the UV moves, it would only move the UV gantry if it was going to be out of position by more than that tolerance. Otherwise, it would leave the UV gantry where it was, which meant that when the hot end was doing short zigzag infill moves, the extruder gantry could effectively stay still. That worked fine apart from segmented arcs because what would happen is the, the extruders would move uh, partly away around the arc and they would reach a position where they were where they were misaligned with the hot end by more than tolerance so there would be a large U or V move to get the UV gantry back in position with the hot end gantry. So you could have a situation where it would do a quarter of an arc and then there would be a bit of a pause while the UV gantry moved a large-ish amount and then it would do a bit more of an arc. So to get around that I, I did a, bit, a, a kind of a crude thing which basically it looks through the file and if it sees a real a small move which would indicate a segmented arc then it faithfully replicated that move. So it was a bit of a fudge to get around doing these arcs so I found some time to uh, look at this again in a bit more detail and um, I've come up with something a bit better. I'm not a writer of code, I, um, it, it's not something I was ever trained to do. So the code that I've ended up with, I know it's not efficient, anybody that wrote code for a living uh, would probably fall around laughing if they saw it, but it gets the job done. I found it quite difficult if I tried to do too many things at once. Um, if it didn't work to find out whereabouts in the code the problem was. So I took a different approach and basically I kind of iterate through the g-code file and just do one thing and then I iterate through that file again and do something else and then iterate through the file again. Uh, so I'm sure someone that knew what they, they were doing um, could make that process a lot more efficient. 
Well, the first thing it does is go through the file and um, generate the A, B moves for the load balancing gantry. So I've changed things around a bit rather than that replicating what the extruder gantry does, although that's a bigger mass, it doesn't do the short zigzag moves. Um, and the longer moves are, are less long than the hot end, uh, which I'll come to later. So the UV moves are always shorter than the XY moves. Um, and the short, the really short UV moves, that gantry doesn't move at all. So I decided that um, it would be better to use my load, load balancing gantry to uh, compensate for the, the violent um, zigzag moves that the hot end does, rather than the less frequent moves that the extruders do, even though they're higher mass. So I've taken a lot of the lead out of the bucket that sat on the top of the AV gantry um, and I've doubled the accelerations. It's still fairly modest, I used to run 1000 millimeters a second squared and now it's 2000. Um, I'll see how the hot end performs and whether I can um, bump that up even more. So the first thing I do is look through the, look through the G code file and mark any moves that are less than this uh, value that I set as a variable. And then it goes through the file again and it looks for sequences of those moves because an, an arc is generally at least three of those moves, three or more moves. So it reads through, um, looks for sequences of short moves and identifies those uh, blocks as being um, potentially arcs or circles, shall we say. Having identified those blocks of G-code, I then go through the file yet again, and um, it'll read through each, each line and basically find the minimum and the maximum X values, and the same for the Y, find the minimum and maximum. So then from the minimum and maximum, I can calculate the, um, the dimension of that feature uh, in both X and Y. So if those features are less than my uh, tolerance, which for X is plus or minus 20 mil, and Y is plus or minus 15 mil. So if that feature has a width of less than 40 mil, or less than 30 mil, then it gets marked as being a small feature. So obviously a cylinder can only be marked as a small feature if it's 30 mil or less in diameter. So having found those small features, I can then find the center position in X and Y and basically generate a U and V move that will park the extruder in that center position for that feature. So when it comes to do, say, a 30 mil cylinder or less, whether that be a hole or, or whatever, it will park the extruder gantry in the center of that hole and then the hot end will do its thing and, uh, and, and print that, that circle. I haven't got a hot end on the printer at the moment because um, it's still under development and it's a bit broke at the moment. So then the next pass through looks at the remaining small moves or sequences of small moves and those are the ones where it, the UV gantry will exactly replicate the XY gantry so that any uh, a cylinder greater than 30 mil in diameter the UV gantry will do exactly the same as the XY so the extruder gantry will do exactly the same as the hot end gantry and it will follow that round so it won't pause part way through and wait for the extruders to catch up with the hot end. So then having, having identified the small features and parked the extruders in the center of them, then identified all the other arcs and replicated those with the UV gantry, um, I then have to do the remaining moves. So as before, take the new position that the x-axis has got to move to and to take the current position that the extruder is in. So then if the position of the extruder gantry, the UV, 
is within the tolerance of the hot end XY gantry, then it won't move the extruder gantry. It will only move the extruder gantry if it gets out of position by more than the tolerance, in this case 20 million X and 15 million Y, plus or minus 20 million X and 20 and 15 million Y. To use your imagination and pretend that there's a hot end on there doing something. But I've added a little twist to that as well. So rather than move the extruder to the hot end position, depending on the direction of the move, it will move the extruder to the hot end position less the tolerance if it's negative, if it's positive, or it will move the extruder to the hot end position plus the tolerance if it's negative. Effectively that means that if the hot end does a 100 mil square then the extruder gantry will only move 60 mil in X, 70 mil in Y. So rather than an extruder move, when it has to make an extruder move, rather than that lining up exactly with the X and Y, it lines up within an allow that allowable tolerance. I don't know if I've explained all that very well. Um, it's probably best if I just um, show you it in action. Um, this is the test part that I knocked up in OpenSCAD just to um, just to test this out. They've got lots of cylinders, different sizes and stuff as you can see. 